This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now I want to start out this video with a formal apology to everyone watching, or at least specifically those who were born in the 90s or early 2000s, because this video is definitely going to ruin your childhood. And Nickelodeon has been known for many things, creating shows that we as children loved. We couldn't wait to get home to watch our favorite shows like SpongeBob, Barely Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, Cat Dog, Angry Beavers, Hey Arnold, and the list goes on and on. But over the years, we have discovered Nickelodeon is a little bit of a, dare I say it, evil corporation. And I know, who could have possibly guessed that a company's entire existence is based on making money and children's content turns out to be something evil? Who would have thought? So a while ago, I made a video about Nickelodeon going down the rabbit hole, seeing all the really dark stuff that they have in their past. And I highly recommend that you watch that video either before this one or after it, because it kind of, you know, fits together. I mean, we've all heard the Dan Schneider situation. We've heard about the Jeanette McCurdy situation, you know, her writing her book and showing all of her terrible experiences from her past. And more recently, Alexa Nicholas has actually spoken out a lot about her awful experiences on Zoe One one that I felt uncomfortable on set. There was bullying happening. Five minutes later, he comes back. And it's like a DVD player. Does this make you feel better? She even ended up making a podcast talking about all the terrible things that happened back then and kind of going over it with her experiences. Now, I know this video in particular is gonna be a pretty rough one. Might even make you sick to your stomach. But if you guys wanna cleanse your palate, I have loads of other content on different channels. And with the power of Squarespace, all of that content is now in one location. Now, if you guys don't don't know Squarespace, it is an incredible website builder that takes all the confusion and pain out of creating a website. Making a website is something that's important for every walk of life. Whether it be you want to start a business, you want to sell some stuff, you want to have just a place to show all of your work that you made. If you're a YouTuber or streamer or something like that and you have a bunch of different platforms, you can make a website to have all of your stuff in one nice and neat location. And with Squarespace, you have a ridiculous amount of options. And with Squarespace, Squarespace, it's so easy with all their pre-built layouts that you can choose from. Arrange it in a way to make the creation of the website extremely streamlined and easy. And everything within these templates are completely customizable. And it also has great podcast support because let's be real, I know you're going to make that podcast. So why don't you take that website building into your own hands, customize it the way you want to customize it, build it the way you want to build it with Squarespace. So why don't you guys head to squarespace.com and get your free trial. And whenever you make a website that you're ready to post, you're ready to show off, make sure to go to squarespace.com slash bionicpig to get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Making a website doesn't need to be difficult. Go to Squarespace. I feel like the most disturbing thing about all of this Nick stuff is the fact that so many of these actors and actresses just wanna stay quiet about the situation. Every one of them know exactly what happened and what's going on and what did happen, but a lot of them are just keeping quiet. I mean, sure, some don't wanna lose their job, they don't wanna lose their connection. And also there are those who are just diluted into believing that what they experienced as young children was just normal. For example, let's talk about the Ned's Declassified podcast. Yes, the cast of Ned's Declassified actually started making a podcast with all of the previous actors. You know, everyone's making a podcast at this point. Let's talk about Lindsay Shaw. She completely undermined Alexis's entire experience on Zoe 101. She even ended up making an entire lie about her on the podcast. And this was such a huge lie, they actually cut out the part of the podcast and even removed the YouTube short that they posted about it. I could not find the original video of this because obviously it has been deleted. So I'm gonna use Alexa's video and just take some of the bits out of that and show you what I'm talking about. They were, they were best friends really? for a long time. We were... I remember she got mad at me on Facebook. <laughs> she blocks me. We, that. Oh, <laughs> we were like, that was actually like one of the core female relationships in my life. Really? Yeah. Well, like, she was honestly a really good actress. Like, like, has she, where is she? She's like she's out there. off to the universe and stuff and had the kids. She's and out there. Whatnot. <laughs> out into the universe, Lindsay. What's up with you? You went through your thing, and I've been and I've been healing from my stuff. Like, what's going on? I don't understand why I'm such a shameful name to be 
to be said. I mean, wow. Traveled the world with her musician, like. Lindsay, I was um, broomed by the age of 16. And that person that took me to around the world, it was because they were isolating me from my family and friends while they were blank, 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 blanking me. I, I just like empathize with her mom. I don't Dude, I got a fist fight oh, yeah, with yeah, her mom. Sure. Oh. Because her mom, <laughs> Sorry, her no, mom no, was no, acting no, all no, kinds no, of no. like. All but, kinds of like, what is going on? What is this podcast? You know, a, just she was a lot. like moms. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And I, I also just, yeah. And I also just want to protect her. And so like, she wouldn't let us leave one night. She was like, just holding on to Alexa. And I was How like, old were you? Bitch. Um, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. 18? Yeah. Oh. Wow. That's when she went crazy. And I was like, okay. I knew you were like, like tough and like what, like, you know, but I was like, this is like, uh, it was like unhinged a, or something. <laughs> oh, and everything's about me. She's like, she's not a, she's not a god. It's my post. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I like her. I'm like, oh my god, that's so something. She it tough. was so random. I was like, I'm sorry. You're right. She's a goddess. Yes, but I'm just, just like random. I don't know, but like some wonderful human being. Um, but yeah, we we had to cut ties just because like we were no longer seeing like, eye to eye. Toxic, yeah. yeah. And to say Lindsay has a little bit of a delusion when it comes to uh, how the world works would be quite an understatement. I mean, obviously the fact that she completely lied about Alexa and kind of just scoffed at all of her past trauma, she recently asked her entire audience to send her dick pics. And it doesn't just stop there. So after she asked her audience for these dick pics, she received a large sum of dick pics, which is already an enormous problem. But then she proceeds to brag about all of these said dick pics and even showing these dick pics to everyone everyone on the podcast, even the guest who was on the podcast at the time. So uh, how are your dick pics coming? <laughs> <laughs> he started sending me dick pics about six months ago. I well, thought you guys didn't know each other. I just sent my dick pics to random numbers. Right? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, so the other week on the pod, <laughs> Lindsay consented to getting dick pics sent to her. And let me tell you guys. I they did you, not disappoint. One of the best requests them. I've ever put out. And Lindsay would not, not stop, stop mm. showing us these photos. I mean, at a certain point, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know if there's a specific law for this, but if you're a public figure asking for your audience to send you nudes, 1000% one of those nudes had to have been an underaged person. Because the thing is, you don't know. You do not know that the pictures you're, you're being sent are of age or not. And the fact that these are technically private pictures being sent to her and are now being shown to all these other people and she's bragging about it is beyond disgusting. And don't even get me started on the double standard here. Like imagine if it was a dude public figure asking a bunch of girls to send him new. I mean, there would be people at his door with pitchforks at that point. It's not okay. And the thing is, I'm sure a dude has done that before, but all I'm saying it's not okay. And for some reason, she thinks this is okay. And if you look at the comments on the YouTube shorts, there's literally dudes in the comments asking where to send these nudes. And I feel like this is kind of showing like the delusion that a lot of these child stars end up having where they just don't understand how the real world works. And it's not just Lindsay Shaw. There are plenty of other child stars that don't necessarily side with Dan Schneider, but just don't validate the things that he's done. Josh Peck, for example, only refers to Dan Schneider as a tough boss and just says what he experienced was nothing like what Jeanette experienced, which I mean, obviously, he's a guy. See the Dan Schneider or alleged Dan Schneider yes. chapters were um, so crazy and it, it just put me and all the Jamie Lynn Spears conspiracies and stuff like that. I just, I don't want to grill you on this. I don't want to, I don't want to ask you we'll anything. We'll do it on your pod. You, <laughs> no, you can. Um, what were your interactions with him like? If I can ask. I, I am being 100% honest. He just was a tough boss. And Josh Peck actually had Jeanette McCurdy on one of his podcasts, but they ended up not airing it because of something that happened. Jeanette McCurdy basically just wasn't happy with how the podcast turned out. Still don't really know why. But the response that Josh gave about it was just 
kind of weird. They had Tana Mongu as a guest on their podcast, which by the way, didn't know she still existed, but he constantly refers to him and his co-star as the good guys over and over. And I get it, that is technically the name of their podcast and they might've just been joking around, but I, I don't know, it just, it felt kind of weird the way they were saying it. I read Jeanette McCurdy's book. Um, I thought it was an amazing book. So did we, despite what Jeanette says. What did, <laughs> oh, does she think? She, she, she was our first ever guest. Really? Like the day that she released her book, mm -hmm. like she was becoming it, she came on, it was an amazing get for us. We were truly good guys. Unbelievable interview. Spoke about everything that she wanted to, nothing that she didn't want to. Mm. It ended, and she told us not to run it. We've spoken about this endlessly. We've spoken about this endlessly. But but I, so there is an, an unreleased episode of our podcast. I, I, there is a small update, because you're right, we have talked about this endlessly, that happened yesterday. Yeah. So us Ooh. being the good guys we are, said, Jeanette, no problem, we'll kill it. Yeah. Do you want to come back on? No response. So four or five months later, you know, we got you, we got, we got H Duff. I'm like, we're killing it. Let me check in. She owes us. I wrote, all I wrote to Jeanette after six months was, hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's tough. I got a green bubble. Am I blocked? Oh. And the fact that Josh actually said that she owes them She's the guest. She's the one getting interviewed. If she didn't like the things that were said on the podcast, if she didn't feel comfortable with them going out, she don't owe you shit. It's just gross the vast amount of disrespect a lot of these uh, you know, previous child star actors give when it comes to these delicate situations. They basically live in a bubble thinking, oh, those things didn't happen to me. So we're gonna not validate the things that happened to you. And we also have Matthew Underwood, the guy who played Logan Reese on Zoe 101. And he was fully defending Dan Schneider. And don't even get me started on the reboots of Zoe 101 and iCarly, how iCarly didn't have Jeanette McCurdy, how Zoe 101 didn't have Alexa Nicholas. There is a whole can of worms to open with those things. Okay, but enough of that. Let's get into the real meat of this video here. Let's bring our attention to none other than the official page of Nick Rewind. And no, I'm not talking about a fan page. I'm not talking about some random channel on YouTube. This is the official Nick Rewind YouTube channel. And as we look through these videos, we stumble upon something called kissing compilations, which is already quite strange. I mean, we all know that everyone on these shows were very young. So to post not one, but four different videos of kissing compilations is very weird. And if we just take a quick look at these comments, we could plainly see the type of audience that this attracts. And that was just a few of them. And yes, technically these could just be children, but I mean, let's be real. If you're posting a kissing compilation with children on it, you know what kind of audience it's gonna attract. And one more thing before we get into the details of this. I wanna shout out Alexa and Nicholas here because if it wasn't for her, none of these things would have really been brought to the surface. And if you like this video and are interested in hearing more about this stuff, I would highly recommend supporting her podcast and her cause. Links will be in the description. Let's start with the Zoe 101 video. We see a simple kiss between Victoria Justice and Leif or Jaren Vosberg, I probably said that wrong. Seems innocent enough, right? Just a little kiss. But let's take a closer look. Victoria Justice was born in the year of 1993. So at this time in the show, she would have been 14 years old. So you would assume they'd find an actor similar in age. You know, they might both be kids, but you know, at least they're similar in age. But that's not how Dan Schneider worked. Jaron Vosberg was born in 1989, and at the time of this clip, he would have been 18 years of age. So what you guys just watched is a clip of an 18-year-old kissing a 14-year-old. So this is basically a crime made into an episode, posted uh, on Nickelodeon, and later on made into a kissing compilation. And this is just the beginning. This is just one kiss scene. There are four kiss scenes between these two in this compilation. You can't handle that! What are you doing? Alright, now it's getting gross. Let's go! And not to mention, Jeanette McCurdy mentions in her book that Dan Schneider on set made actors redo kissing scenes over and over and over. And it's not just the thought of that 
and the underage situation. It's also the fact it's not just a little peck. It, it ain't just like a, you know, like they're done. They, they hold it. They stick there. They basically make out. And I do want to mention, I don't really want to blame the actors that are going to be the older of the two because we all know the hellish world of childhood acting. It's not like they could just say no. There's contracts. There's, you know, uh, directors yelling at them to do specific things. It's not that simple. And to the people who are gonna say throughout this video, oh, P pig, it's just acting. It's totally fine. They're not really kissing, it's just acting. I want you to stop for a second and really think about what you're saying, okay? Really think about what you're typing in these comments. You are saying pedophilia is fine as long as it's in context of acting. You're saying forcing childhood trauma on these children is fine if it's in the context of acting. Stop normalizing this. Be better. So we actually get another moment with Victoria Justice, except let's look at this guy in the video. Just look at him. You don't even need to know the age of him. He obviously looks way older than her. And you want to know the age of Victoria Justice at this moment? 13 years old. And the actor playing the guy in this clip is Brando Eaton, who was born in the ripe year of 1986. And with some quick mass, we could figure out that makes him 20 years old. A ridiculous age gap. A grown man kissing a child on camera, a 20 year old kissing a 13 year old on camera, posted on Nickelodeon and re-uploaded as a kissing compilation. So let's move on to the iCarly kissing compilation here. Right here, we have Miranda Cosgrove and actor Andrew Roy in this clip. At this moment in time, Miranda is 16 years old, born in 1993. And just from looking at Andrew alone again, you could see he's an older guy. And this guy was born in 1986. And that makes him 23 years old, a 23 year old kissing a 16 year old. That's like someone who's already been through college kissing a sophomore in high school. It's not okay. And can we just look at the details of this clip of the show real quick? Like they're in his room next to a bed making out. Like the context of this is just disgusting for the age of her. And it doesn't stop there for Andrew Roy. He was also in Hannah Montana playing another boyfriend character for Miley Cyrus. And it's the exact same age gap that Miranda had. Miley being 16 at the time and Andrew being 23 at the time. And I love that I found this clip on TikTok because it says that the show didn't let them kiss because she was 16 and he was 23, which is absolute bullshit. Because if we look at the past clips, all of them are extremely underage and they're still kissing. And again, I'm not really blaming Andrew Roy here. It's really hard to blame him just because of knowing how Dan Schneider is. I don't think they really had much choice in the situation. And I'm sure the world that these child actors were living in, they were so deluded and convinced of these things just being normal. It probably wasn't even a big deal to them at the time. Let's move on to another example, shall we? This one actually has to do with an older woman kissing a boy. And this one isn't as terrible because they aren't like making out like they did in the other clips, but this is the character we all know and love, Gibby. Gibby! Yeah, Gibby. If you remember Gibby from iCarly, there was a moment in the show where he did have a girlfriend for a while. And obviously looking at this now, you could plainly tell that girl is quite older than he is. Emily, I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce that last name, was 18 years old at the time, and Noah was 13. And there was another moment where it was a older woman as well, and this had to do with Nathan Cress, where Abby Wilde was 18 and Nathan Cress was 15. And we also have another one with Tori and Daniel. Daniel was 18 years old and Victoria was 15 years old. And again, this is just the compilation videos that were posted by the official Nick Rewind channel. I can guarantee you there are probably a lot more of these situations that we aren't even aware of. And the worst part about all of these is the fact that it wasn't just like one moment on camera. These are actors and what actors and actresses have to do are retakes. And let's just take a look at Jeanette McCurdy's situation. She actually talks about this in her book about how her first kiss was stolen from her by the directors of iCarly, specifically Dan Schneider. Her first kiss was actually with Nathan Cress. And in her book, she talks about how she had to redo this kiss scene 
over and over. Our lips are touching. He's moving his mouth around a bit, but I can't move. I'm frozen. His eyes are closed. Mine aren't. Mine are wide open staring at him. It's so odd staring at a person while your faces are touching. I don't like it. I can smell his hair gel. Move your head around a bit more, Jeanette. The creator yells from off camera. And obviously within this, the creator who she refers to is Dan Schneider. McCurdy said, honestly, she tried to do what she was asked of her, but her body was stiff and unflinching. My mind was saying, who cares that this is your first kiss? that your first kiss is on camera. Get it over with, do what you're told. My body is saying, no, I don't wanna do this. I don't want my first kiss to be like this. I want my first kiss to be a real first kiss, not a kiss for a TV show. And obviously Dan Schneider didn't really handle the situation quite well. Jeanette even mentions that Nathan, for example, her co-star, he can deal with it, but unfortunately she can't. She said, if you're me, you're just thinking about every single little thing that's happening and your mind is racing and you can't wait for it to be over with. The creator looks me right in the eye, but doesn't say anything for four or five seconds. I almost start to laugh thinking he might be messing with me for fun, like he does sometimes, but then recognize there is a deep anger within him. This is no time for laughter, he says. Jeanette, more head movement, she recalled, adding that he shouted at the crew to get the cameras rolling. And Jeanette McCurdy even mentions that she had an out of body experience during this moment. She said, shoot, I'm supposed to move my head. I start moving it back and forth, back and forth. I sway it around. It doesn't feel natural, so I'm sure it doesn't look natural. Nathan, as his character, Freddy, finally breaks away. McCurdy said that the creator shouted cut, and she could tell by his tone that he wasn't happy with the footage. Dan Schneider says, fine. That was not ideal, but fine. We'll move on. It's so disgusting, not only the fact that he's being aggressive in a situation like this that should require way more understanding as you're forcing a literal child to kiss on camera who's never kissed anyone before, while at the same time forcing them to repeat this scene seven different times times. And this is just one instance. I can guarantee you this was not the first time Schneider ended up forcing young kids to redo the scene over and over in order for it to be right. And there is one more instance that I know of that I want to talk about when it comes to the age gap here. And this one isn't just a one scene kiss moment. This is an entire show. I'm sure a lot of you know Drake and Josh. And if you have watched the show, you know about the relationship between Josh and Mindy throughout the show. And let me just show you what a kiss scene looked like in between these two. <laughs> Quite aggressive, right? Quite aggressive if you ask me. Now let's find out what their ages were at the time of this. Whenever Allison and Josh's relationship on the show started, Allison was only 14 years of age and Josh was 18. And they were a couple throughout the show doing countless kiss scenes until the show ended in 2007. So even at the end of the show, Allison still was not of age as she was 17 years old and Josh was 23. So the entire relationship of the show between them was an adult and a minor. Honestly, it's kind of ironic that Drake ended up becoming the one who was messing with minors after the show ended. And I'm sure everyone could split hairs here and say, oh, well, in this country, uh, the age of consent is this. Oh, well, in this state, the age of consent is this. It's not even that big of an age gap, blah, blah, blah. Because people don't understand how childhood trauma works and brains work and maturity works. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you're one of those people watching this and you start making excuses for the situation and think it's not that bad, you're a part of the problem. Stop normalizing this shit. Oh, they're just actors. No, they're people, they're children. And the fact that this was not only shown to millions and millions of people on cable television, but also made into a goddamn compilation with a bunch of creepy ass perverted comments on the video itself. It just shows how these corporations can get away with it and just mock everyone. They're literally mocking everyone. Like, look, look what we did. Look what we got away with. You guys can't do shit about it. And again, if you guys wanna know more about Nickelodeon, I highly recommend going to watch my iceberg video about this because they get away with stuff like this a lot. But thank you everyone for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This is deep dive into hell. If you enjoyed this video, want more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. All that nonsense. You know, you know the drills. You guys know how it works. But thank you all. Hope you have a great day. Bye.